Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I am Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we're going to be reviewing not one, but two Rickmotech modifications, or mods, for our Thrustmaster TH-8A shifter. Now, these mods are the Sequential Shifter mod and the Short Throw H-Pattern mod. Two of the things that I'd like to see improved on my current TH-8A. So what we're going to do, obviously, is put this through the Sim Racing Garage review process and see if they really do add anything to the experience of shifting a Thrustmaster TH-8A. So let's get to it. All right, let's take a closer look at these mods, and we'll start with the Sequential Shifter mod. The one I'm hoping is going to do the most work and make, get the best improvement because the sequential shifting, as I've said before, on the TH-8A is, yeah, leaves a lot to be desired to me anyway. All right, so this is a very tough plastic material this is made out of. You can see there's four holes on the top. Obviously, those are the screw holes where we'll be attaching it to the TH-8A's body. We'll flip it around, and you can see that this is plastic has it's not 3d printed it's actually been milled out so this is a very strong plastic here i don't see this failing anytime soon so I, I like the look of that and it's a pretty simple mechanism that we're looking at here this is obviously a spring that's captured by this plate that's got the screws and the shaft is going to go straight up through there and the idea is when we're going back and forth with the shifter shaft it's going to be moving this piece right here and giving us a notched feeling when we're doing the sequential shift. At least that's the idea. Also on here, they've actually, when they did the machining here, they have left a tab, and it's this one right here. Let's see if you can get a better look at it. There it is, sticking up. So that tab obviously is for the switch that's on the TH-8A to uh, let the shifter know that it is in sequential mode. Right. So not much to this, really, except for what's going on there. And, of course, we have the red Rigmotech stickers on the side of it, which actually I kind of like. It's kind of a neat look to it. So the next one is going to be the Short Throw H-Pattern mod. And actually, there's not a whole lot to this. Well, there is a whole lot to it. I don't mean to, to simplify it because, actually, this has been tested a lot. A lot of guys have actually used this. And again, we have the four mounting holes here for the screws. And what this is going to do, obviously, is you can see the shifter pattern here on this. You can see how this one is narrower. There's not as much space in between it. At least I hope that's showing up on camera. In fact, let me uh, get rid of our knob here. I may be able to see it a little easier. There we go. So this is obviously going to shorten things up a bit on the throw. Doesn't look like a whole lot, but we're going to actually find out once we get it on there. But this goes under the plate, so this plate will go back on top. And of course, these four screws are going to have to be replaced. Now remember, we're putting about a half inch or so, maybe three quarters of an inch of spacing in between the housing right here on the TH-8A. So this is going to raise everything up, obviously. And both of these kits, the sequential shifter and the short throw H pattern have these extended bolts included in the kit which is very nice touch because well once we put these spacers in here or these mods we're going to need these extra length and these screws rather to go down and be able to secure everything because the screws that we take out aren't going to be long enough so it's nice that he includes the screws as part of the kit when you buy your mod and of course we get the cool looking Rickmotech high performance sim racing equipment sticker that we can stick on here too. We may put it in place of the little lawyer nag tag that we have removed. <laughs> right, so that's about all there is to it. It's not going to be hard to install these. We're just going to obviously take these four screws out and put the others on, but we'll get to that next. Right, so I want to go ahead and do the sequential mod first because that's the one I'm hoping to get the most change from uh, as far as what obviously what we're dealing with now with the sequential on the TH-8A which is not great as I've said before. So what we'll do first is take this top off and I've got my little driver here to help me with that and bear with me while you listen to the driver make noise. Let's get a little angle here you guys see what I'm doing. Pretty easy just four screws. These are 2.5 mil uh, cap screws so easy to get out. Yeah, 
and we can see the plate just falls right off and we're going to not use this plate for the sequential mod and we're not going to use the sequential plate that comes with the TH8A either. We just installed this by itself. Very simple. Again, we're going to, because it's going to be a sequential, instead of in the H configuration, which would be like this, we're just going to turn it like this and make sure that we put this one right, which is really hard to not do. It, it's pretty easy to put this on, as you can see. All you're going to do is slide it over the top. And again, this little tab in there is going to contact the switch so it lets the shifter know that we're in sequential mode and everything works like it should. And it's a little snug getting it around those threaded part of the top here, then it slides right down. So we just pay attention to the way this is going in and we'll get one of these nice longer screws. And I kind of like to just lift the top off a little bit and look down in here so it'll let me know how far off I am getting it in the hole. That looks about right. Start it with your fingers and we're good to go. Now I'm going to put one on the opposite crossways pattern side just because that's the way I like to do things. And yeah, that's going right in. So great. This plate here is really nicely machined and very accurately machined because it's going right in just like it should. Instead of having, sometimes you get a mod and you kind of have to jiggle things around a little bit as you're getting the screws to try to line up and get them all in, or at least all started. But yeah, that's not the case here. This looks pretty good. Yep. All right, so now all we have to do is tighten them up. And I'm not going to do a final tighten with the driver. I never do. I, I put it on a very light clutch setting because I don't want to strip the threads out. It's very easy to do on this kind of stuff. So I just want to run them down, basically. So bear with me while I do that. Going the right way would help. There we go. All right, good to go. Now let's put the knob back on and see what the difference is. And of course, it's not going to be felt as well until I get this thing mounted again. So I'm just going to do a little test just of curiosity to see what it feels like. Wow, it's <laughs> it takes a Yeah, that's, that's a lot of pressure. And again, I don't have these torqued all the way down yet, so I'm just going to be easy. I'm not going to really jerk it hard. Yeah, that actually is working pretty good. It feels like you're now you're pushing through something when you're doing your sequential shift. Yeah. And it's not just more spring tension. It's because, remember when I showed you the bottom of this, that, let's get this back off so you can see it better, that this cam, yeah, I guess this is the best way to call it a cam, that piece of plastic that has the spring back over on this side, because it has those ramps on it that you see there, as you're pushing the shifter against that ramp, it requires force to go up the ramp and push it into the housing where the spring is. So it's not just like you know, the other cap just has a spring on either side, a piece of metal, a piece of metal wire really essentially. So yeah, it makes a big difference in the feel of what the other top does. So all, already I can tell this is an improvement. now. How much of an improvement, how it's going to feel once we get it mounted to the rig? Well, we're just going to have to mount it to the rig and find out. So that's what we're going to do next. Go ahead and get this mounted to the rig and get some driving video, and then we'll get some thoughts on what we think about it. Now we'll go ahead and install the short throw H-pattern shifter mod. Now first, we'll go ahead and take the knob off. And what I wanted to do before I got there is you can see here this black piece that's sticking up on the shifter lever shaft. And what that does is actually spin around. It spins on this shaft. And that's to facilitate easier shifting into the gate from one gate to the next because it'll kind of roll against the side of these gates. Now, when we put this on there, you can see how much more we're going to be putting as far as the height. So this 
gate's going to go back on top of this once we have it installed. So that means that this roller is not going to engage this metal anymore. We're going to have metal to metal. Now some guys actually put some, in fact the older kits that this came with actually had some shrink wrap, heat shrink wrap tubing that you could put on here and use that so when you're shifting. And I might actually put some of that on there. I have some of that. But I'm going to go without it first just to see what the wear and tear is. And the thing is, when you put the heat shrink on here, it doesn't last very long. Even if you put a couple of coats on, I've seen guys do different things. It's like two or three <laughs> levels of it on top of each other and then you know shrinking it down on each level. But still, eventually it wears down. So I'm going to leave it metal for now just to see what the results are. And you'll see that as we install this, how much higher this gate's going to be once we have it installed. So let's go ahead and get to it. First, we'll go ahead and pull this one off. Again, 2.5 millimeter little cap head screws on here, and we'll just pull those off real quick. Okay, so now we're going to just lift this off like we normally would do if we were going to like install the original sequential shifter plate on top and turn this to a sequential, but we're not doing that. And if you haven't seen these metal plate before, it's just like this, it's nothing special here, just some pot metal. It feels like pot metal that's been polished on the other side here with that brushed look. But uh, it does the job and it's got these little angles on the little fingers that are pointing out in the gate. So you can see these little radius pieces of it here and that facilitates again shifting from one gear to the next and then if we were going up to from fourth to fifth it would just roll right into fifth at least that's the theory if you if you get it right and if we were going to fifth to fourth it would roll back again into the fourth slot right so simple enough to install this one thing to be mindful of is this little piece here it's a little guide pin or a locator pin if you will and that's going to go in this hole here next to the switch hole and it's pretty simple just, just put it up there it's not you know, like i said this is a very easy thing easy thing to do and you'll know you have it right when you're turning it and the whole assembly is turning with this top plate and you can see the pigtail back here rotates also with it right so simple enough now all we have to do is install our screws and we have these very long screws that comes with the kit because obviously we've add, added more height here. Now we'll go ahead and put our metal plate on top. Make sure I get my holes lined up here. Might be a little fiddly to get these going, but go ahead and once we get one started, usually it's easy to get the rest. <laughs> All right, there we go. Here's one. And just get it finger started, and then we'll just do the rest the same way. And it should line up pretty good. These actually are, are very well machined pieces here and, and there's no real jiggling for getting it to hit the threads down inside of the shifter. Right, one more. And we'll go ahead and put these in and I always use a very light torque with these electric drivers to put screws in because we don't want to strip anything out and then I'll hand tighten later. All right, so it's a little crooked, but I might change that a little bit. And again, it's not torqued all the way down, so I can actually still move it. All right, so now this is what we've got. You can see now we've actually kind of got a, a short shifter too, not just a short throw shifter, but the shifter itself is going to be lower. And you can see now that it's just the metal here making contact with these fingers or prongs or whatever you want to call them that form the gate here. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see just how much difference that makes when we're shifting. Yeah, let's go ahead and put the top back on. Or the knob, not the top. <laughs> top knob. Right. So now, it definitely is a shorter throw, no doubt about it. I'm just wondering, the only thing I'm wondering is, is the wear and tear on this metal shaft in I'm not going to, again, like I said before, I'm not going to put any shrink wrap on it at first. I'm going to run it a little bit, and then we'll see how it ends up later on. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get my 2.5 millimeter wrench, 
and just hand tighten and re just torque these things down to where they're nice and snug and this won't move anymore. And then we'll go ahead and get it mounted to the rig and see what it looks like. All right, so here we are in iRacing in the Lotus 79. We're testing out the H pattern mod first. And the peculiar thing about this short throw shifter mod, the, the shifter definitely has a shorter throw now but it's not that much. If you measure the plastic gate, that is the original plastic gate underneath the metal gate that the shifter comes with, it's about 44 and a half to 45 millimeters between each gate all the way across. So when your shifter lever lands in one gate and, and then comes back across to another gate, you've gone about 45 to 44 and a half millimeters in travel distance. Well, if you measure the mod gate the same way, it is actually 44 millimeters between the gates. So it's really not a noticeable difference from a human being standpoint of distance that we're traveling. What makes the difference and what makes this gate do the short throw is, or shorten the throw, is that it's a half inch or so higher. And that's what gives it the shorter throw. And it's, once I was driving the car and having a good time with the shifter, I, I don't think I, I maybe missed one shift. And without this mod on it, I missed several shifts because the, it just feels so much longer when it's really not. We're talking, I measured it, the difference, and it's eight millimeter difference between one side of the throw to the next side of the throw when we're going all the way across. So that doesn't sound like much, eight millimeters, but it, in, when you're actually using it in real life, it feels much better. It gives you a much better, to me anyway, positive feel of gear engagement. When remember, we don't have any other feel. It's, you know, there's no, there's no uh, tactile feel that we're actually going through the transmission linkages. All we have is the gates to stop the lever. So now the gate is stopping the lever sooner. Not that much sooner, but just enough. It's like a sweet spot that I don't think I hardly ever missed any, any shifts where the other gate, the stock gate, uh, unfortunately, I missed a, a couple of shifts here and there more often than I normally do because it was such a long throw, I think. Now, of course, you can adjust to a long throw. We're human beings and, you know, we can do that. But, yeah, this modification made me a lot more accurate with the H pattern shifter. And, yeah, I was much happier using this shifter with that mod in it. I wasn't sure it was going to make that much difference, but, yeah, if it's keeping me from missing gear, especially in the heat of a, a race or something like that, then yeah, it's doing its job. So yeah, I like this one. And what we'll do next is just go right on over into, we're gonna be at Sebring again, and we're just going to the sequential shifter, and we're in the Skippy. And right away on the sequential shifter, yeah, this is a big difference. Uh, I think I've said it before a couple of times that the stock sequential shifter setup is just well it's it's pretty lifeless there's just not much feel of anything just going from one stop to the next stop just bang bang and you know you don't feel like you're doing anything and it's it's just very numb feeling to me especially since i've had i've had time to actually use other sequential shifters that have great tactile feedback to them yeah just just totally numb now that we're pushing against that plastic cam piece against the spring, now it feels like you're doing something with the sequential shifter. It feels like you're pushing through and turning that control shaft that goes across the top of our of a sequential transmission. It doesn't feel as good as some other shifters out there, but it does make me feel like I'm doing something now when I'm actually when I'm shifting the sequential shifter before it just didn't feel like I was doing much at all. I was just moving something. But now, because of the way that cam works and the ramp on either side of that for the downshift or the upshift, and the spring's got a lot of tension in it. It's very, very firm, which again adds to the immersion that you're actually shifting a sequential transmission. So, yeah, they've done a great job with this. And I was thinking of that when I was actually doing the closer look of it, of, of this particular mod, the sequential that, yeah, this is, and as soon as I put it on there, I said, yeah, this is a big, big difference, and this is probably gonna be the most noticeable difference. And it was, it was shockingly different than not having it on there. But, again, it's just a spring and a plastic cam, so it's only gonna do so much. But what it does is, you know, for the money, 
I think it's, it's a good upgrade to the TH8A instead of upgrading to a whole other sequential shifter. Yeah, I like what this does, and they did a real good job on a sequential shifter. It just does what it's supposed to do. Now, there is one caveat to this. It's a little bit softer going on a downshift, pushing it forward, than it is pulling it back. But I like the upshifts being stiffer anyway, but it just seems a little bit of different tension for some reason or another on the downshift when I'm pushing it up. But still a good tactile feel like I'm actually doing something, though, and pushing through something. So that was the goal, and they met that goal and did a good job with the sequential mod. I, I, like I said, it really improves the TH8A's tactile feedback when it comes to sequential. So what we'll do next is go ahead and get to the final thoughts for the Rick Motec H pattern short throw and sequential mods. Final thoughts on the Rigmotech Thrustmaster TH8A short throw and sequential mods. When I first got my TH8A, I thought it was a good shifter, especially considering the price point. But I knew it had more potential, so I started looking for a way to mod the shifting feel of this unit. The first ones I wanted to try were the Rigmotech mods, as they've been around for a while, and a lot of people have used them with mostly good results. With the short throw mod, I was able to increase the accuracy of my H pattern shifting. It has the lever coming up short of the original stops by four to five millimeters. And you can see here that it, it doesn't look like that much. But for me, it was the sweet spot in shifting comfort. It just felt right. Now the sequential mod is the one that made the greatest impact on making the TH8A feel like a sequential shifter should. The stock sequential action was really, well, not much action at all. <laughs> it felt vague and uninvolving not adding much at all to the immersion factor. With the Rigmotech mod installed, the sequential action now feels like you're actually pushing through something before getting to the stop. The cam-shaped plastic piece combined with the stiff spring creates a snappy feel when you're shifting. I don't think anybody would be disappointed with the feel that this mod brings to the shifter. Overall, both of these mods come together to ring out the performance I thought that the TH8A was always capable of. Now, at $30 for the short throw mod and $50 for the sequential mod, these are not the cheapest mods available for the TH8A, but I feel that they are some of the highest quality ones, and they've proven themselves over time to be durable. I actually know of some out there that have been using these mods for more than a year without any issues. And that's one of the reasons I chose them. Now, I've seen other mods out there that don't have very good feedback from some of the people that actually bought them. And I have to say that anything that is 3D printed is always going to be a little bit suspect as far as wear and tear is concerned. But I'm looking for other mods that I think would be worth reviewing. I'm Barry Rowland, and thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. And don't forget to subscribe and check out our website at simracinggarage.com.